Hello, this is John the Computer Don, and today we're going to be covering the Security Plus SY0-401. So today I really want to cover the Security Plus exams and how to go about testing and uh, preparing yourself for those tests. The first thing that I really want to jump into here is the book training. Uh, the Cybex book is the best in my opinion. If you want to get the Security Plus certification, it really has a great layout of how it has been put together and the author really knows how to get that information into your head. And again, I, I really cannot uh, suggest enough that you go out and buy the Cybex book off of uh, Amazon.com. I'll leave a link down here somewhere uh, to get to that. Uh, another thing that you really want to take into consideration is either paid training through like CBT Nuggets or tr Train Signal or what, Plural Site, I think they call it now. Uh, or you can do this actually on YouTube. There is a guy named Professor Messer who has a really, really good uh, Security Plus training uh, playlist and I think it, there's two of them and he really goes into depth of how to understand the concepts of the Security Plus. Uh, again, highly recommended. So let's dive right into what are you going to be tested on within the Security Plus examination. So the first thing that you're going to be tested on is network security. This is going to be 20% of your grade, and you're going to want to have an understanding of networking concepts. So I would suggest you go out and maybe read the Network Plus book before you jump into Security Plus, as it is very vital that you understand networking concepts. Uh, the CSENS may be another good one to go and, uh, and check out. So this is one of the things that you're going to want to focus on is uh, things like firewalls, routers, switches, uh, proxies, so on, and uh, being able to actually say what security implementations you want to use on those physical devices, or maybe even virtual at this point, considering that uh, there's a lot of virtual uh, or logical devices that could be on your network. Uh, you also want to be able to de describe things like uh, how, how a demilitarized zone is set up and what it does, why you would use a demilitarized zone or DMZ, uh, how subnetting works. Again, this goes back to the networking portion. Uh, VLANs, how they work, uh, NAT, remote access, telephone systems. You're going to want to understand all of these things. You're also going to want to understand protocols, things like TCP IP. HTTPS, um, Telnet. Not only you don't have to fully understand everything about the protocol and 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 you know how to to create it from scratch, but you do want to understand how these protocols work. I have a TCP/IP and subnetting tutorial on my website, uh, JohnTheComputerDon.com. So go check that out. Uh, the second part is going to be your compliance and operational security. This is going to be 18% of your test. You're going to want to go over risk concepts, false positives and negatives, uh, policies such as uh, privacy policies and security policies within your corporate environment, and how you would address things like job rotations and uh, people leaving the company, uh, things like that. What is your IT security policies uh, at your 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 work. So the next thing is threats and vulnerability. This is going to be the bread and butter of the Security Plus exam and uh, probably my favorite part and what I found most interesting. This is going to be your types of malware. So you're going to deal with root kits, you're going to deal with ransomware, Trojans, uh, all of the different types of, of malware that is actually out there on the internet. And uh, the next thing is types of attacks. and what these attacks are and how to define them, such as DDoS, spoofing, phishing, DNS poisoning, SQL injection. Uh, those are all things that you're going to want to cover and know how they, uh, how these people would attack your organization. So 
the next big one that uh, is actually the most eye-opening to me back when I originally took the Security Plus exam many, many years ago is uh, social engineering. So people going dumpster diving for information and picking up passwords or cleaning people trying to, to you know, go through your desk to see if maybe you have your passwords in there if, if you're cleaning people or bad people. Um, tailgating, so this is when you have a bad system and you maybe have a revolving door and somebody decides to uh, to sneak in right behind you uh, before the door closes. Uh, also impersonation, and uh, that's, that's one of the things about security that a lot of people <laughs> in security fully understand, but most people in the environment don't. It's, it's really funny. You just call them up and say, hey, I'm from such and such within your IT organization. I need to, uh, to check your password criteria. Give me your password. You'd be amazed how many people actually will fall for that. Uh, the next part of the exam is application data and host security. This is going to be 15% of the exam, and this is going to go over application security concepts, server and client validations, uh, application hardening, configuration baselines, mobile security, and the forms that you have to sign when you first come on to, uh, to work at an organization, such as your data ownership agreements, uh, agreements to forensic analysis of your hard drive if they need, um, acceptable use policies of how you're going to use the internet and things and not be on Facebook playing around all day. Um, the fifth part of the exam is access control and identity management. This is going to go over authentication services like Kerberos and LDAP and Radius, things like this. Uh, another thing is to be able to fully understand the difference between identification, authentication, and authorization. That is a really big part of this chunk of the exam, so make sure you, you really have a solid foundation in what each of these mean and why are they different. Uh, you're also going to want to know the basics of group policy, maybe not how to implement or manage it, but just know what group policy does. Uh, you're also going to cover user privileges. Uh, again, this comes back down to, you know, what what information does a certain user have access to, and that's something that you would probably define through your group policy. Um, the last part of the Security Plus certification exam is cryptography, and this covers how cryptography works. It's going to cover your cryptography methods such as WEP, WPA, MD5, SHA, AES, so on and so forth. Uh, you're also going to want to know your certification authorities and who your certification authorities are for digital certificates and also why there are digital certificates. And Overall, that's about it for the Security Plus exam. I'm going to leave a link down here also with the information on the Security Plus exam and everything that CompTIA publishes is part of the exam objectives. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope that you go out and you get your Security Plus certification after you have a solid understanding of networking concepts and you've also, again, definitely got some experience in the field. Uh, Security Plus is not going to be one of the easy certifications to get, but if you really dig into it and, and enjoy IT, then you're going to really enjoy this exam. I know it was probably the, one of my favorites of all the exams that I've taken. So, again, there's a link over here or over here, or, I don't know, uh, for subscribe and subscribe to the channel if you really like the videos. Uh, you guys are what make me really want to do this. And as well, if you would like to follow me on Facebook, you can hit me up at John the Computer Don on Facebook. Uh, my website, johnthecomputerdon.com. I'm on Twitter, same thing. Uh, and on YouTube. So uh, again, if you really enjoy this video, uh, like down here. And check out my previous videos. I've got one up for right now for the A-plus certification and why I don't think that it's worthwhile to get. I think it's great to understand the concepts of it. But anyways, it's, uh, it's down around here somewhere. And uh, 
again, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you soon.